Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to uh, Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to continue our series of the HTTP security headers. And in part three, we're going to discuss uh, refer policy and the cache control. I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm sure cache control you must have heard of and you must have seen in the various applications. Refer policy is also quite common but not probably understood by uh, various professionals. So I wanted to go over and discuss those out here. So we'll start with the refer uh, policy, and 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 first off, like before even we go there, I want to discuss what the refer problem is. So the refer usually you would see in, as you can see in the screenshot here, you would see in the request uh, when you're going or like in clicking on some page or some link on the web page, and then uh, that will be included by your browser, the refer header, which will tell you from where. Uh, the request is coming from, like where's the what's the origin of the request? That's the refer. So, for example, here I was, let's say, clicking on um, Google.com, and I was on the Facebook.com, and Facebook.com page had a Google.com link. So I clicked on it. So I'm going to Google, but however, in the refer, it's gonna say it's a Facebook.com, right? So, so this seems like okay it's a it's a quite common but but what's the issue here so the issue here is consider uh like you know on the on the facebook page uh where i'm going to click the google uh, uh instead of the facebook i'm 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 on the reset password page or the change password page of the facebook and suppose they are doing the change password uh via get request so when i submitted the uh, like you know my old password and the new password it it travels through the get request and and eventually uh, like you know, i got the uh, i got my password changed and then i clicked on the google now when i click on the google of course in the refer header i still be able to see for example https facebookcom password is equal to and then like you know a query parameters such as old password and the new password now of course i don't want to share the detail with the google and and no one wants to like you know send this information out to a third party but in this way uh, there is no security compromise however this information is still shared so that there, there are two consequences with this one uh, we got our sensitive information leaked to the third party uh, where we did not intend to and sometime due to privacy uh, like forget about the change password or the password itself let's just talk about like you know the address so if you are on Amazon or, or any of the website where you try to ship something or you store a new address and now it's like, you know, for the payment or something, it's going to redirect you to the third party website where all of this information will be shared via refer header, which you do not want to. You don't want to send your private information such as address or first name, last name, whatever, or phone number to the third party. So this information will still be shared uh, via this query string and the parameters if anything is stored in the query string, right? So these are the two problems we have. Now, how do we overcome? So there are several ways you can limit this or you can prevent such issues. Uh, one of them is you can use the no referrer when downgrade. So this is the default uh, like you know, policy. Uh, so uh, here's the syntax. So you're gonna give like a referrer policy and then you will say no referrer, right? And when you say no referrer uh, when downgrade, so this is default. Uh, and when, when we say downgrade, it means the downgrade of the protocol. So HTTPS is a higher protocol, HTTP is a lower protocol. So it will not send any refer information or refer header if the request goes from HTTPS to HTTP, right? And it's only going to send if the request, origin request was HTTP and then the destination is also HTTP and vice versa, like HTTPS and HTTPS. The other option is origin. So you can specify only send the origin. So in this example, let's say the the, uh, the URL is uh, servicesecurity.tv.com or servicesecurity.com and then token is equal to one to three. Uh, however, sometimes this parameter like token uh, or the query string might contain some sensitive information and we do not want to disclose that. So if we specify the origin, then it's only going to send you or share with you uh, the origin only and no query string. Uh, the third option is origin when cross origin. So whenever the request goes to the cross origin, so in our in our earlier example, if there is an image or like you know on the Facebook, we have a Google or any third party link, and if we click on that link, then that's a that's a cross origin request, uh, and we have covered that in the past, like cross origin resource sharing uh, issue. 
So if that's a cross origin request, and it's only gonna uh, like you know share the origin. So instead of cybersecurity.com token one two three, it's only gonna share www.cybersecurity.com for cross origin request. For the same origin, it's gonna send everything. Now another uh, example is another way you can do is the same origin. So on the same origin, of course you uh, like you know uh, you want to restrict. So in this example, for the same origin, we were sending everything, assuming that okay it's the same origin, it's a trusted website. However, if you do not trust, because there might be possibly on the same origin we have multiple applications. Uh, handled by multiple team. Uh, we are talking about the enterprise application. So if you want to restrict it even further, what you can do is you can do the same origin. And here, instead of cybersecurity.com token123, it's only we're going to share the origin of the uh, request, even uh, even though it's the same origin request. And of course, it's not going to share anything if it's a cross-origin. Cross then uh, strict origin is the same as the same origin. However, it's going to behave for the same protocol. So if the request goes from HTTPS to HTTP, even for the same origin, it's not going to even send the origin. It's going to like you know wipe the header, uh, refer header completely. Then we have strict origin when cross origin. So this is same uh, like you know as strict origin, but this is for the cross origin. So in the cross origin, if the protocol remains the same. Then it's going to share the origin. If the protocol differs, then it's not going to share anything. So in this example, let's say if the HTTPS and the and the require like the other application or the cross origin HTTP dot Google dot com, not the HTTPS, then it's not going to share anything. And if it's the same protocol, then it's going to just share the uh, origin. And then the last one is unsafe URL, and and uh, hopefully, like you know, I don't need I don't need to explain this to you. This is like you know, it's going to share everything without any restrictions. So this is that's the name suggests like it's an unsafe URL, so you should never set it. So when you are uh, like you know doing the review of any application, just make sure you uh, you pay close attention to the refer header. See if you can find sometimes like you know burp and automatic scanners will figure this out. Like if you are doing the active scanning or the passive scanning, it's gonna uh, observe all of these headers and information going back and forth, and would uh, raise a concern if there is anything. But even if like you know you don't see anything and and you still want to raise this bar of the security of the application, you would you should recommend uh, like you know uh, of course out of these options except the last one, uh, like which option does suit for this application, and and that way you would increase that in in future if anything goes wrong, you are still not sharing full information or or any sensitive data with a third party. So that's for the refer policy. Now let's talk about the cache control. Now this is something you must have seen before and you must have heard several times. So here the 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 uh, like you know the communication is simple. Uh, uh, here the client will request something from the server. Server will send that uh, to back to the client and will say, okay, the cache control header is this, and we want to keep this for 3,600 seconds or whatever. So now this is going to be share, uh, stored on the browser's cache. So next time when the uh, request comes back for the foobar.css, instead of going back to the server, it's just going to retrieve from the browser. Now um, this uh, this is efficient uh, for several purposes for many developers because it limits the number of requests that needs to be sent to the server, so it limits the bandwidth of, of the server. Um, however, it also raises security concerns if uh, what if like you know the sensitive data is being cached on the browser. Uh, so perhaps like you know, if it's a shared system, someone else can uh, grab that information. If it's like you know storing some username and password or some uh, sign-up forms or data or or anything like that, or the bank statement or anything, so that's gonna raise the concern. If I'm the like you know I can use the same system as what you have used and I can uh, like you know extract all this information from the cache. So that's the big concern, and that's why uh, whenever you are you are doing the review of any application, you you want to make sure if you find any content that's in the response, uh, in the not in the request, but in the response, and uh, the response it does not have the cache control uh, header, then you definitely want to raise the security uh, concern here because it's gonna cache by the browser, and then browser uh, cache uh, we all like you know, it can be easily extracted. So how do we prevent that, right? Uh, first off, like uh, if the sensitive data is being cached, then first 
attempt that you should make or, or any developer you should instruct is to use the cache control header and, and set it to no store. That means uh, you have strictly uh, instructed browser to not store any information, no matter uh, if it's sensitive or not sensitive, right? So uh, this is the easiest and, and most uh, viable options you have. Uh, the other thing is uh, you can use the Pragma no cache. Uh, this is uh, sort of like you know uh, an optional header to support some uh, deprecated, uh, I think, HTTP 1.0. Uh, where the HTTP uh, like cache control uh, uh, like a no store is header is not supported, so you wouldn't need that. So mostly uh, your focus should be uh, making sure the cache control no store header is set. Uh, you can also take an approach where sensitive data like wherever there is a sensitive data being returned, then you can apply this header. For rest of the application, you can uh, apps, like you know remove this header. Uh, so that way it gives the optimization for the developers as well as security for the application as well. So these are the two headers I wanted to discuss and, and let me know if any other headers that you want me to deep dive into it and, and give you some more understanding. But that's all I have got for this time. Thank you for your time. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on the Facebook so you will get the regular updates on my videos and, and other security news and interesting news that I, I come across. And uh, thanks, thanks for your time, and I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye.